Hi, Valerie. Hi. Um, so, for your class, um, we felt like it would be um, relative to do the effects of cyberbullying in social media for our final topic. Um, so, we're going to start by giving you the definition, which is um, cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using electronic technology. Electronic technology includes devices and equipment such as cell phones, computers, and tablets, as well as communication tools including social media sites, text messages, chats, and websites. Unlike face-to-face -face bullying, cyberbullying can be anonymous, persuasive, um, pervasive, <laughs> and instantaneous. Moreover, it is um, it can happen 24-7. Um, versus, you know, face-to-face -face contact at school. Um, it mostly affects youth from the ages of 10 to 24, and um, the suicide ranks as the third leading cause of death um, in our society. Examples of cyberbullying include mean texts or emails, rumors sent by email, um, or posted on social networking sites, embarrassing photos, videos, websites, or fake profiles. Unlike victims of the other three types of bullying, victims of cyberbullying are more likely to report, report depressive symptoms, um, reports depressive symptoms than cyberbullies or bully victims. Kids who are being cyberbullied are often bullied in person as well. Additionally, kids who are cyberbullied have a harder time getting away from the behavior. As I mentioned above, um, cyberbullying can happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and um, can reach a kid even when he or she is alone. Um, it can happen at any time, day or night. The Cyberbullying Research Center indicated that 50% of teenagers have been cyberbullied at some point. Um, and 20% are regularly cyberbullied. Because 80% of all teenagers have cell phones, this would be the most typical method. Cyberbullying messages and images can be posted anonymously and distributed quickly to um, a, wide, a, a very wide audience. It can be difficult and sometimes impossible to trace the source. Deleting inappropriate or, inappropriate or harassing messages, texts, and pictures is extremely difficult and after they have been, after they have been posted or sent. Um, children um, who are bullied have one or more of the following risk factors. They are perceived as different from their peers, such as being overweight or underweight, wearing glasses or different clothing, being new to a school, or being unable to forward what kids consider school consider cool. Um, they are perceived as weak or unable to defend themselves. They are depressed, anxious, or have low self-esteem. They are less popular than others who have few friends, and they do not get along well with others. They are seen as annoying or provoking or, an or antagonize others for, for attention. Uh, however, even if a child has these risk, factor risk, factors, risk factors, it does not mean that they will be bullied. Some of the effects of um, cyberbullying is um, use of alcohol and drugs, skipping school, experience, um, in-person bullying, being unwilling to attend school, receive poor grades, have lower self-esteem, having more health problems, and uh, cell phones and computers themselves are not to blame for cyberbullying. Social media sites can be positive, can be used for positive activities like connecting kids with family and friends, helping students with school, and for entertainment. These tools can be used but they can also be used to hurt people, whether it is done in person or through technology. Reasons to engage in cyberbullying is disinhibitation effect. <laughs> the disinhibitation effect refers to a behavior associated with obvious decline in concerns about self-presentation and judgment of others. When using the internet as a communication interface, it can be anonymous, which can foster disinhibitation. Disinhibitation. Inhibitation. An advantage of being online or losing oneself in cyberspace is its element of invisibility as essentially it is faceless. This feeling of being invisible effectively eliminates social disapproval and concerns at being found out or punished. Other reasons to engage in cyberbullying is online aggression was motivated 
by proactive reasons. However, uh, there was a study conducted that also implied that the role of reactive motivations um, caused uh, online aggression as well. Social acceptance is typically another reason that can cause cyberbullying and needing to belong. The need to belong and acceptance by others can oftentimes motivate people to want to bully others. Um, another indication for bullying can be family dynamics. If a bully is likely to um, become a bully if they have there is a uh, power imbalance within the family. Other associations have been found with families that are enforced rules um, of aggressive behavior. If the victim is pro uh, provocation, uh, this is often when the response to traditional bullies, when they are questioned about their behavior, the victim provoked them into being a bully to them. Uh, also, another um, reason why bullies will bully their victims is because of the victim's appearance. Males are more often than females to bully a person due to their appearance, and females are more likely to be bullied than males. Males traditional, are traditionally more often bullies, and they're more often to exhibit aggressive behavior patterns, and they're more impulsive on these feelings of being aggressive towards someone who is their victim. Uh, females, on the other hand, are more likely to use covert methods of bullying, expressing less empathy towards others, and displaying aggressive social reactive uh, behavior patterns. In an Australian study reported no significant de gender differences amongst bullying behaviors for boys and girls, but did find that girls were more likely to experience covert bullying acts than the male counterparts. Girls being more than twice as likely to report being a victim the, of cyberbullying than boys. Um, so one of the things we wanted to touch on with doing cyberbullying for our topic was we want to choose three um, victims who have committed suicide due to um, cyberbullying. And um, the person who I specifically chose was Brandy Vila. You've probably heard of her. Um, she was a victim from last Tuesday's um, suicide in Texas. Uh, she was a victim of cyberbullying that resulted in a suicide. She was 18 years old. She was still in high school. She was from Texas City, Texas. Um, she was bullied mostly about her weight. Uh, she was well. She was well liked by everybody, um, especially you know like her friends. Um, she tried to avoid being bullied, which is one thing I found really interesting about her. Um, she, whenever she would get messages on her Facebook or any of kind, any kind of her like social profiles, she would ignore them. She wouldn't answer them, um, but people would create fake profiles and accounts to get a hold of her. And they would also send her encrypted messages, um, such as text. So that's kind of something we had discussed earlier on. Um, and that's like something that can't be traced back to the original sender. Um, and that was used to bully her, but nothing could be traced back to anyone. So as of right now, they have no known, no known suspects. And um, they also, which is what I found horrible. They, well, all of it's horrible. Um, but they made fake online dating profiles of her. Um, and, like, they would send her the link. But as they made, like, fake dating profiles of her, they'd put all this information out of her and also, like, would solicit free sex as her um, with her photos and all her real information and stuff. Um, the victims that I chose were... Megan Murr and Amanda Todd. Amanda Todd was a 15-year-old Canadian girl who, uh, prior to her death, she posted a video on YouTube with the flashcards telling about her story, and she told of her story and her experience of being blackmailed and cyberbullied and, and her self-harm and being physically assaulted in uh, real life. After she released this video, um, she was continu before she released this video. She was continuously cyberbullied on Facebook, on any dating websites. There is one individual who would continuously make fake profiles to harass her, and no matter how many times she had these accounts blocked, they would continuously attack her via the cyber web or through her cell phone and through calling her. Um, 
They would make these fake profiles. They would post her videos online because she would set up these chat rooms. She wanted to meet people through chat rooms. And it was back when AOL was a common thing and you would meet people on AOL. And she would video chat and message with these people on these chat rooms. And she ended up getting blackmailed by an older man to show herself topless. And so he took screen, screen grabs, as it was described, and um, screenshotted her her breasts and she, he would create he created numerous Facebook profiles using her photos that he screen grabbed from these video chats that they did and he used them against her and they blackmailed each other well he blackmailed her and she attempted suicide two other times one time trying to drink bleach um, and when she did that she was told relentlessly that she needs to do it right and she continued to receive abusive messages about the failed suicide attempt. And they would post it to her wall. They would send her these private messages. They would continuously send her these horrible messages that she needs to try doing it again. Um, and according to her mother, her mother said that they would move schools to try and get away from this person on Facebook who kept trying to attack her and they because she Amanda Todd ended up cutting herself because of the the situation and so they kept trying to move but no matter where they went they kept being followed and thus Amanda Todd ended up ultimately hanging herself because of the cyberbullying and she was a 15 year old girl which ab is absolutely disgusting that this would happen the next person is Megan Murr, who is another victim of cyberbullying. She was a 13-year-old American who she opened an account on MySpace and received messages from a 16-year-old boy who was fake. His, his profile name was Josh, and Josh and Megan became friends on MySpace and they never spoke in person they didn't know each other in person it was purely one of those online friendships and slowly it turned into something where he would be there for her emotionally when she needed him and soon he started to harass her on this fake profile of a person named Josh started harassing her over their myspace accounts and it came to find out that he this account was actually registered under a old friend of Megan's mother. Um, this old friend, Sarah Drew, her mother, Lori Drew, ended up creating this profile and harassing Megan on MySpace. At the time of the suicide, the Drew and Murr families were neighbors living only four houses apart from each other. Lori Drew was aided by Sarah, her daughter, and Ashley Grills, an 18-year-old employee of Lori, um, to create this hoaxed account. They, they were testified to, um, of the women intended to use the messages sent to Josh to get information about her and later humiliate her and for, because she apparently spread gossip about Drew's daughter. Um, uh, in October 2006, the tone of the messages ended up changing from Josh from going to reliance and comfort to something a little bit darker where he started saying, and I quote, I don't know if I want to be friends with you anymore because I've heard that you are not very nice to your friends, end quote. Uh, this ended up turning into where he, this fake account created by the Drews would encourage her to kill herself. And eventually, the last exchange was on AOL instead of MySpace, where she ended up saying, and I quote, you're the kind of boy a girl would kill herself over, end quote. So because this woman and her daughter created this fake account to, the point was to humiliate her, and ultimately they ended up getting her killed. They, because of this bullying, is utterly disgusting and thus because of the cyberbullying there but there was a prevention act put in place by congress in 2009 uh it was actually it was introduced in 2009 called the megan murr cyberbullying prevention act and 
but unfortunately it was not passed by Congress. And so P. 